Hi, I'm Alistair. I'm a games designer. And one of the things I love about designing escape room games is that you can create some really physical hands-on interactions. So players have to hit buttons or pull levers or spin dials. But it's 2020 and one of the things we're being told to try to reduce the transmission of coronavirus is to reduce the number of shared surfaces that people touch. So I wondered whether it would be possible to design an input for an escape room puzzle that was COVID secure and could take the place of a button but not actually require players to touch anything. And over the course of the next few videos, I'm going to look at some different components you can use to achieve that. In this video, I'm going to start off by looking at one of these. This is an infrared obstacle avoidance sensor. Uh, it's very cheap, they're very easy to get online, and they're very easy to use. So let me show you how it works. So here we can see we've got a bunch of components mounted on the board, but the two that we're most interested in are these two mounted on the end here. So this clear one at the bottom, this is an infrared LED. And this one at the top, this is an infrared detector. Now notice that they're both pointed in the same direction away from the board. So what's going to happen when this unit is powered up is that the infrared LED is going to shine infrared light in this direction away from the board. The infrared receiver at the top, well, this is going to detect infrared light that is coming back towards it. So because they have this kind of directional nature, even though the two components are mounted next to each other on the board, the detector is not going to detect the infrared LED because um, the light won't shine sideways like this. Rather, it kind of shines out of the tip and only if that infrared light is reflected back off a surface, like my hand, that's what's going to set the detector off and is going to write a signal to this out pin at the bottom here. So to show that in action, let me now connect this to my Arduino. So you can see we've got three pins at the bottom. We've got um, an out pin a ground pin and a VCC pin and I've wired those to uh, 5 volts to ground and to digital pin 2 on my Arduino here and you can see when I've done that that the um, LED at the top here has lit up this is a power LED and at the moment we've also got uh, another LED at the bottom this is going to light up when an object is detected when the sensor here detects enough infrared light to exceed a certain threshold value. So to set that threshold, that's going to be like setting the sensitivity of the sensor. And we're going to do that using this rotary potentiometer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a screwdriver here and I'm first of all going to turn that potentiometer all the way clockwise and you'll see that the LED comes on when I do that. What that's done is it's actually um, increased the intensity of the LED light that's being uh, sent out by the LED here. So though you can't see it, turning that to the right has made this LED brighter, and that means that more light is going to be reflected back onto the sensor. So what I want to do now is I'm going to now turn this potentiometer back counterclockwise again until that LED at the bottom just goes off like that. So I've taken it just underneath the threshold required to set that LED off and that's going to mean that the sensor is now in its most sensitive state. And when I do that, if I put my hand in front of the sensor, you'll see that I can make that LED come on and off from a distance of, that's about somewhere between 10 and 15 centimetres, I'd say. Okay. And if I actually turn on my Arduino serial monitor at the same time, um, what you'll see is that the code sketch I've got running on the Arduino means that I can detect a new input and I will also detect when an input is held. So I'll have this series of dots go up like that. And then when I take my hand off, we'll get those dots stop. 
So we can actually detect when a, an in input has um, been detected, when it is held, and also when it's removed. So that's kind of three different actions that you might want to take in your code to simulate a button input. Now it's important to note that even though we can't see the infrared light that's being sent from the LED here, this is essentially an optical system. And um, so if I take this pen for example, notice that I've got a highlight pen here that has a, a black end and a grey end. When I hold the grey end in front of the sensor, if I move it up and down, you can see it being detected. The light is flashing at the bottom there and I've also got my serial monitor window uh, detecting when I've held it or when I've removed it. Now if I do the same but with the other end of the pen passing it in front of the sensor you'll see that I don't get uh, anything detected at all even when I move it right in front of the sensor like that and that's because the black end of the pen is not reflecting the infrared light it's absorbing the infrared light instead so nothing is being transmitted back onto the uh, receiver unit. So it's important to note that this detector um, very much depends on the colour and the reflectivity particularly of the object you're trying to detect. It works with my hand, it will work if I point it at uh, the white background behind it for example, but it will not detect um, a black object or specifically an object that absorbs infrared light. So that's worth bearing in mind. So here's just a quick fritzing project just to recap over that wiring again. So we've got VCC on the sensor going to 5 volts on the Arduino. We've got ground going to ground and we've got the output signal from the sensor going to digital pin 2. Uh, there's nothing special about that pin. You can use any of the GPIO pins on your Arduino. You just need to change the code accordingly. And here is that Arduino code. Now there's not actually very much to it at all. The output from the sensor gives a high or low value depending on whether an object is detected. And we can retrieve that quite simply using a digital read. So the majority of the rest of the functions here are designed to replicate that uh, button behavior. So whether a button is pressed or held or released. So we'll, we'll just step through it. So um, the first thing we do is we define the variable called sensor pin and that is going to be the pin number to which the sensor is detected. So as I just showed in the wiring diagram I'm using GPIO pin 2. And we'll also define an output pin for an LED that we're going to light up. Now as it happens the obstacle detector sensor has an LED on board anyway uh, so all this is really going to do is to uh, replicate that LED coming on and off but you could use this to drive uh, a relay or, or any other thing as well so uh, this is going to be an output pin that changes to match the input that is read by the sensor on this pin. And then in the global section we define a, a single variable called detected and what this means is this is going to keep track of whether an object was detected in the last frame or not or whether this is a new object being detected and that's going to help us differentiate between um, whether it's equivalent of a button press or a button hold. So to start with we'll initialize that it's a boolean variable because it's either true or false and we'll initialize it with the value false. Then we go into setup, so this is the function that executes when the code first starts up. Uh, we'll create a serial connection using a baud rate of 9600 and we'll output uh, just the name of this file and the date on which this code was compiled. Uh, this is something I've sort of started adding into all my projects recently, it's very handy. If you've got like a whole bunch of Arduino's lying around and you can't necessarily remember what code is running on which one. If you include something like this at the top of your code it means that the first thing you'll see when you connect that Arduino uh, to a USB connection to a PC and turn on a serial monitor you'll actually see the name of the script that it is running and also what version of that script is. So this is a, a useful line of code to include at the top of any of your uh, Arduino sketches. 
and we'll initialize that uh, output pin that we're going to use to shine the LED. Uh, so we're using pin 13 which is the inbuilt LED pin on most Arduinos uh, but you could connect that to uh, any device you want to, to drive the output when an object is detected. And now we've got uh, three functions in which we're going to define the behaviour that we want to occur depending on when a, one of these three uh, actions is detected. So this one, input detected, this one gets called the first time we sense a new object that wasn't present before. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a high value to the LED pin, so that's going to make the LED come on. We're going to write a value to the serial monitor as well. And we're also going to set this detected value to true, because that means that in the next frame, we'll be able to tell whether it was a, a new input or not, or whether this was an input we already knew about. Uh, this function here, so this is input held, and this is the one that's going to be called in every frame in which an existing object is still being detected. So we don't need to light up the LED in this one because the LED was already lit up here when it was first detected, so it will still be on. But what we will do is we'll just uh, print uh, just a little dot to the serial monitor. That's what's going to kind of let us know that we've got some visual indication that the uh, object is still being detected. And that's what's going to make those kind of lines appear you saw in the monitor window. And then this function is going to get called when an object that was previously detected is removed. So now we can turn the LED off or whatever else it was that we had connected to this LED pin. We'll write a low signal to that. We'll write the word remove to the serial monitor. And now we will set the detected flag back to false again. So next time we find a new input, we know that it's not just this one being held in range of the sensor, it's actually a whole new one being detected. And then we enter the program loop. So this is the code that runs over and over um, for as long as the Arduino is plugged in. So the first thing we do, well, we actually need to take a reading from the sensor pin. That's what digital read is going to do here. And we've got uh, an exclamation mark in front of it because that is going to uh, give us the opposite of whatever the result of this function was. Now, the reason we're doing that is because certainly on my sensor, um, what happens is it reads a high signal when there is no object present, and then it reads a low signal when there is one. And that kind of feels perhaps the um, kind of the reverse for a round from what you'd expect. Um, so just to make the code easier to read, we're, we're going to invert that because then we can think that a true value or a high value is when there is an object present, which I think is how most people would probably prefer to, to think of it. So we'll, we'll take the inverse of whatever we read from the signal and we'll assign that to a value called reading. So if uh, reading, that means so if this value is currently true or high, that means that there is currently an object in range of the sensor. And we enter this block of code here. And if detected is false, so that means either that this is the first object that's been detected, because we initialized detected as, as false up here. So the very first time the code has run, this is false. And it also gets set false uh, again every time an object is removed down here. So we set it to true when one is detected, we set it to false again when it's removed. So if an object, uh, if detected, sorry, is currently false, that means that we, uh, there is no current object in the way of the sensors. This is a new object being detected, it's the equivalent of a new button press. So we're going to call that input detected function that we defined above. If uh, detected is not false though, so if it's true, then we enter this block of code instead. So what this means is that there is an object in range of the sensor and also there was already an object in range of the sensor. So in that case what we're going to do is we're going to call this input held function instead. So we've got two 
possible cases. If there's an object there and we didn't know about one before, it's a new object detected. If we did know about one before, it's an input held. Or if uh, reading is not true now, then we fall into this block of code at the bottom here. So what this means is that we can't currently detect an object, but if we could before, so if detected was true, that means that in the past input detected has been called, well that means that whatever it was, whether it was someone's hand or whether it was something passing by or whatever it is that you want to detect, it's not there anymore. So we call the input removed function and that's what's going to uh, set that low value again on the LED pin. It's going to print the command that says removed and it's going to set detected back to false ready to uh, receive the next object that's detected. And then we'll just put a little delay at the bottom. This just slows your code down slightly. There's no need for this to run at kind of, you know, maximum speed of 16,000 times per second or whatever. So we can just delay the code a little bit um, at the bottom there. And then this loops over and over and that is it. So to summarize, these units are very easy to use. They're very cheap and easy to get and they're pretty effective in the vast majority of cases. The things you need to be aware of is that they are affected by environmental conditions, so both the ambient lighting and also the nature of the object you're trying to detect, what colour it is, what reflectivity it is. But so long as you're able to work within those constraints, these are actually a really good choice. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at an ultrasonic sensor instead, which again has an emitter and a receiver unit, but works with a different type of wave, and that opens up different possibities and different limitations as well. I hope you'll join me for that one.